and very much aggravated this difficult breathing from exposure to cold and to drafts. Eh? Sometimes these cases will, ex will exhibit a constant kind of dyspnea, of <clears throat> difficulty in breathing. And that constant thing will be aggravated only during a draft. But what is interesting to remember in this case <coughs> is that feeling of, of fainting. You see, they become cold, absolutely freezing cold, with cold perspiration, the blood pressure drops, and then there is an, an imminent, imminent fear of death. That is the one extreme. The other is that they have this dyspnea and they get, they get an anxiety, a feeling that uh, something is wrong and they may go to die. They may die. They have, they have different intensity in their anxieties. Also, the, this can appear as a sensation of pressure in chest. Sometimes pains can bring a fainting feeling or uh, when the pains become a little bit intense, they feel they are going to faint. Also, they have a feeling as if the heart will stop. <coughs> Pains in uh, uterus and vagina and in abdomen better by drawing in, lifting up the legs and bring them together like, like colosynthesis. And this is even better when they lie on the left side, like Chelidonium. So tubercular, tubercular patients, when they, they see, you see the tubercular, the tubercular taint, there is tuberculosis in the family, he has tuberculosis, there is, there is something involved with the lungs on the family or on the person with this kind of syndrome, thing of labellia. The way he describes is the time of dyspnea. I feel I'm going to die and I feel dizzy. I have a constriction on my throat, a heaviness on the chest. A close, my nose becomes closed and I cannot breathe. At that time, I become panicky and in the beginning there is a flashing and then I feel shivering. The time of dyspnea, I have the, in the feeling that, uh, that there is a pressure on the ears, from the inside, outside. Because constantly I have this oppressive feeling in chest and the dyspnea. Also, and this is also a, a, a symptom that you may note down, a constant feeling of dryness in the mouth without thirst. Now, see another description. It says, if I eat late in the night, about 2 to 3 a.m., I wake up with cold perspiration, with rumbling, and a feeling that I'm dying and I become panicky. 
You see this theme, the, the, how it comes about in, in, in these cases. Uh, sexually, I found that these people, uh, they behave almost normally. They, there are no much disturbances there, except for the fact that there is a little bit over, over sex. And uh, it's interesting that in some of these cases of labelia, you will see a fear of snakes which you will see also in lycosis. As I told you, there are people that that serious, etc., and they do not accept offense. Offense, off to be offended. I mean, they, they are offended very easily. They are proper people, but they don't like to be, uh, to be remarked, especially when it's unjust. This dyspnea feeling, where it's psycho psychogenic. <sighs> See, they say, they say, I have to do constantly this. <sighs> you know, that, what reminds you? If you see somebody sitting there, Ignatia. You see, uh, uh, I had uh, another case that was coming from uh, another homeopath, also my, my student. But uh, some of my students that have left five, ten years ago, you know, they, they, they are not in contact <laughs> with the teaching, you know, so they do not know. And uh, immediately they gave Ignatia. Now this man, an important man, he had a bigger, bigger disturbance from Ignatia. So Ignatia was closed, but nothing curative happened. And uh, uh, when, when he came to me, he presented the picture of Lobelia very clearly. Prescribed Lobelia in the beginning, and there was an aggravation for three, four days, and then perfectly well. So there is a possibility that you may confuse it with Ignatia, sometimes with carbovegetabilis, and most of them we will confuse it with lycosis. There is, uh, from desires, there is some desire for sweets and fat. Another strong symptom which uh, you can note down is aggravation from cold bathing, bathing in cold water. But if they come out to the open air, they can be ameliorated. Open air ameliorates. Drafts and cold bathing is very bad for them. But cold air outside, the outside air, can ameliorate them. They are so sensitive to, to these changes, to the atmospheric changes and to the temperature changes, that one, one could think of another remedy, which is uh, very sensitive to cold and changes on temperatures. Rumex. <laughs> Rumex. <laughs> Yes? Um, you mentioned that there's a possible confusion with carbovegetabilis. Yes. Carbovegetabilis wants uh, a drug. Wants, yeah. But when you see the coldness, when you see the coldness, the coldness during the time of crisis, when you see the coldness of the, of the body, the blood pressure lows down, and the, the freezing, 
And uh, the perspiration, the cold perspiration, you may confuse it. You may confuse it with carbo vegetabilis. It reminds you of carbo vegetabilis. If you go on the acute crisis and you see the person while lying down, because they are anxious persons and they, they can call you. You see, you, you, you may be treating such a person already. And uh, you're just giving different remedies, but it's not making progress. So one day <coughs> he calls you, and you see this picture. You give Lobelia, and it's finished from that time onwards. Yeah, they talk about uh, also a symptom which is like uh, like a podium, a red red sediment, which I have not found. And uh, also, what what I tell you is the experience, which is, and this I have to to make it clear. The materia medica which I give you is not to replace the materia medica. Is to complement. Neither in my Materia Medicas I'll give everything, but I give what I have found out in my experience as the most important and is the most useful syndromes or symptoms. And uh, um, maybe you will find a case with a red sediment in urine, you know, where you will not need uh, like a podium, you will need lobelia. But to me, it has to have that type of person behind. To, need to be needed. So what is more important for me, it is to give you the type of person which I have experienced that they need the lobelia. And there are, and to give you the most <coughs> frequent symptoms which I have met. So you don't cramp your mind with a lot of information and knowledge, but rather with a skeleton on which you can build your little, your little uh, symptoms that uh, you may find. The idea is that person, I mean, you can, you can see a lachesis and then you can see a sarum and you can see a conite and eventually, and then each one has a personality that is very useful if you know it. <laughs>